covered with water, the animals resided in the Sky Realm. As conditions became crowded, it seemed that a new home needed to be found. When no animals volunteered to leave their safe homes for the search, a little water beetle bravely offered to find out what lay underneath the clouds of the Sky Realm. It swam in all directions over the water in search of land, a new home that its fellow animals could live on. Finding nothing, the water beetle dove under the water and swam to the ocean floor where it found mud. The little beetle retrieved the mud from the ocean floor and spread it over the water surface. The mud became an island which is now home to man and the animals. This is a shortened telling of a story from the Cherokee people of North America. Myths and legends are stories that people create to explain what they see around them and to answer fundamental questions about human existence. Myths are usually set in a different age and used to explain the world around us and the traditions of people. These stories are often tied to gods, heroes, and cultural traits, and can serve to provide a basis for social cohesion as well as moral order. Myths typically have strong ties to religion, and insects are surprisingly prevalent amongst them. Scarab beetles are perhaps the best-known example of insect subjects in myths. To the ancient Egyptians, scarab beetles were symbols of rebirth after death. This has been linked to the fact that many scarab species reproduce within dung, as the new generation emerges directly from dung balls, an apparently dead material. Scarab beetles were prevalent in ancient Egyptian mythology and are found in designs of protective amulets. The Egyptian god of creation and rebirth, Kepri, is often depicted as a scarab beetle or a man with a scarab beetle for a head. As the god of rebirth, Kepri was also the god of the morning sun. The Egyptians believed the sun was buried in the earth at the end of each day and rebirthed by Kepri each morning to be pushed across the sky. They believed this occurred in the same way that dung balls are ruled by beetles to be buried in the earth, with the emergence of young viewed as rebirth. Another insect found in Egyptian mythology is the honeybee. The Egyptian sun god Ra is credited with the creation of bees. It was told that when his tears fell onto the sand, they became the first bees. In this way, bees were considered sacred, in addition to their important role as producers of honey and beeswax. Bees are not only associated with the myths of ancient Egyptians. In Greek mythology, three bee maidens were said to have prophetic powers and could read the future by throwing pebbles into an urn. They were envisioned as nymphs with the heads of women and the bodies of bees, and provided the god Apollo with his gift of prophecy. Apollo also contributed to apiculture, as he and the human huntress Cyrene produced a child, Aristeus, who became a demigod credited with the discovery of beekeeping. Bees are also present in the oral tales of many indigenous peoples, such as the San people of the Kalahari Desert. There is a San tale that credits a bee and a mantis with the origin of man. The story goes that in a world covered with water, mantis was sent to find the purpose of life. He enlisted the help of a bee, a creature which represents wisdom to the San people. The bee carried the mantis for days, trying to find dry land on which to lay him down. Exhausted, the bee finally found a great white flower and laid the mantis down in the heart of the flower, along with a single seed, before dying from exhaustion. When the sun's rays hit the seed, mantis awoke, and from the seed left by the bee, the first human was born. Mantises are prominent figures in myths of other cultures as well, particularly those of African origin, in which the insect is often credited with the creation of humans. Insects and other arthropods have diverse roles in mythology. You may be familiar with some trickster characters that often appear in these stories. These include characters such as the god Loki in Norse mythology, or coyote in some indigenous stories, and sometimes arthropod tricksters are present as well. One example is Anansi, a spider trickster from Caribbean and African folklore. Anansi is believed to be the spirit of storytelling and brings both mischief and wisdom. A spider trickster appears in the stories of North American indigenous peoples as well. Iktomi was a spider, or a spider-like human, in Lakota stories. He was known for his cunning, often mischievous ways. He even managed to deceive another significant trickster, Coyote. Although he sometimes caused trouble, he was also viewed as a teacher.
insects have appeared throughout the stories of indigenous North Americans as well. The Blackfoot people held the belief that butterflies brought dreams to our sleep. It was custom to tie a piece of buckskin embroidered with the symbol of a butterfly to a baby's hair when a mother wished her child to fall asleep. At the same time, the mother could sing a lullaby in which she invited the butterfly to come bring sleep to the child. The association between butterflies and sleep may be related to the soft, gentle patterns of a butterfly's flight. The Innu Cree of Eastern Canada believed that fish were protected by a fly named Big Biter. He was a horse fly that would monitor the harvest of fish, and occasionally Big Biter would live up to his name and bite the fishermen to remind them that the fish were under his protection. The Innu saw the activity of Big Biter as a reminder against wastefulness when fishing. Insects also served practical purposes for many of Canada's indigenous peoples. For instance, the phenology of insects is closely tied to that of plants and other animals, so insects could be used as indicators of seasonal changes and other events. Detritivorous insects could even be used to clean any last remaining flesh from the skeletons of hunted animals. Although insects aren't especially prevalent in indigenous cultures, they're still integrated in many different ways and are an important component of the natural systems around us all. This sentiment was eloquently captured in the reported last words of Chief Crowfoot when he said, What is life? It is the flash of a firefly in the night. It is the breath of a buffalo in the wintertime. It is the little shadow which runs across the grass and loses itself in the sunset. We got an indigenous perspective on insects and other arthropods from Elder Elmer Ghostkeeper, a revered elder from the Buffalo Lake Métis settlement in northern Alberta. Just listen to the natural sound. Don't listen for a, for a truck or a motorbike or a jet plane. Just listen. And all of a sudden you'll start hearing the sounds and you realize it's very noisy, very, very busy. They're not bugs, actually, they're flies. They're very, they're very uh, beneficial uh, to the ecosystem here. You know, they, they keep things in balance. There, there's many, many species of insects and they're all in balance. And the, some of you know, and you know, the benefits they give to plants like bees, like all these uh, dandelions, they'll pollinate them. And then when the Saskatoon bushes start flowering, they'll pollinate them, you know, but it's not only bees that do that, there's ants that do that, and there's houseflies. There's different, many different types of species of houseflies, and also mosquitoes, you know, and, and they're all, they're all living in a relationship in their own ecosystems, and they're all beneficial. And when you see that many insects, you know the land is healthy. You know, you don't want a, a landscape where there's no insects. And some people really think that's good because they're not getting bit by a mosquito or a housefly's not landing on you or a, a bee's not buzzing around you, you know, that sort of thing. And I'm saying just the opposite. This is much more healthier. This, this landscape than, uh, say, this rural landscape than an urban landscape. And on this settlement, we don't allow insecticides and herbicides and fertilizers. It's all natural. We're stewards of the land, right? We take care, we're, you know, we, we come to take care of the land for the limited. We're here just in a nanosecond in the big picture on Mother Earth. And it seems to be our duty is to serve Mother Earth. There are even modern day myths involving insects, like the Mothman of West Virginia. Residents reported sightings of a red-eyed, winged creature in the 1960s, and the Mothman story was created and spread throughout the U.S. The Mothman was linked to reports of paranormal phenomena, and the story was further spread in books during the 1970s. Mothman became integrated into pop culture, with references in books, movies, and video games. The legend persists in West Virginia, where a statue to the creature has been erected, and an annual festival is held in his honor. 
Insects are not viewed so positively by all human cultures or religions, as exemplified by the stories of insect plagues in the Christian Bible. In fact, of the ten biblical plagues, three are caused by insects – lice, flies, and locusts. Additionally, Dante's Inferno, which bears heavy influences from Christianity and Greek mythology, depicts the first realm of Christian hell as being eternally swarmed by stinging wasps. Just as the presence of insects in mythology is incredibly variable, so too is the use of insects as symbols in human culture. Symbols can encapsulate religious views or philosophical ideas and are usually strongly tied to myths. Insects are symbolic in many cultures. For instance, in Christianity, flies represent feebleness and corruption and can symbolize torture. Yet, flies historically had positive connotations in ancient Egypt, where they represented the soul of a deceased person, likely due to the sight of necrophagous flies leaving the bodies of the dead. Meanwhile, praying mantises symbolize strength and bravery in many cultures, likely due to their predatory prowess. Bees and ants tend to symbolize diligence and industriousness. There is a reason why we often use the phrase, busy as a bee, as these insects are constantly working for the benefit of their colony. Butterflies are also common symbols across many cultures. In some cultures, butterflies are symbols of the maturation of human souls, likely because of the elaborate cocoons these insects form during development. The apparently miraculous and impressive change from caterpillar to butterfly is a powerful representation of metamorphosis. Some insects can have symbolic meanings with less clear connections to biology. For instance, butterflies and cicadas are commonly associated with love charms and represent love and marital satisfaction, likely because these insects have quite visible or audible courtship behaviors. Some particularly charismatic insects have even become symbols of conservation, notably the monarch in North America and the Homeris swallowtail in Jamaica. Although insects are less diverse in the Arctic than at lower latitudes, they are still abundant and have close ties with the many indigenous peoples that make their home in the Arctic. For the Gwich'in First Nations, insects and other invertebrates are generally less important than larger fauna, like caribou and other vertebrates, as well as trees and other plants. A fear of insects and other invertebrates is also quite common. Despite this, there is a respect maintained for them as living animals. Care is often taken to avoid harming insects or other invertebrates, as the importance of arthropods in ecosystems is generally recognized. Consultations among entomologists, environmental scientists, and community members indicate that many Gwich'in see insects as an important part of the environment and worth studying and preserving. Changes to insect populations due to climate change and the resulting impacts on insectivorous animals is of particular concern for members of northern communities. Insects have even been consumed by the Gwich'in. Warble flies develop beneath the skin of caribou, and the larvae are sometimes eaten when they are discovered under the pelt of harvested animals. Insects also play a minor role with passing mention in some Gwich'in legends. For example, some stories tell of a crow that needs his head cleaned out of insects. Just as the English word bugs often encompasses many arthropods and even non-arthropod invertebrates, the Inuit group together many invertebrates by symbolism rather than taxonomy. The Kapiruit includes insects as well as spiders, some crustaceans, and worms. These small animals are generally viewed negatively or without purpose to the Inuit. While fear or distaste is common, a respect for these animals as life forms with a soul is maintained. One area of Inuit culture in which insects and other arthropods are prominent is shamanism. Many insects and other Kapirawit are important spirits of shamanism. They are viewed as having the power to transform in size and into other forms. These small animals can be symbolic to the Inuit. For example, many insects depict symbols of revival, the masters of life and death as insects seem to return to life after the harsh Arctic winter. This ability of insects to seemingly rejuvenate or revive has led to the use of insects and other arthropods like bumblebees, beetles, flies, and spiders in some amulets. Although shamanism is less common in modern Inuit culture, 
Interviews with elders in various regions of Nunavut indicate that people still fear insects as dangerous or mystical spirits. The small size of insects contributes to this fear, as the souls of humans and other animals are thought to be contained in a miniature form called the tarnik. As insects already exist on this scale, fear is incited that the insects can harm the tarnik or otherwise interfere with it. We have discussed the wide prevalence of insects as symbolic figures and forces in human myths and religion, and the different perspectives held by various cultures about insects. Our next lesson will examine the appearance of insects in art, literature, and film.